guys. So in this video I'm going to show you guys how to uh, hook your kicker motor up to a servo so that you can remotely control it from the helm. A um, few steps I'll, and I'll show you step by step. I'll also show you what you're going to need in this video. Uh, you can check in the comments too. I'll also list what I used. Um, here's just kind of a shot of everything that you'll need. All right, so we'll just jump into it here. Um, we'll start out with our female plugs here, and we gotta solder this into our, our length of wire we're gonna use to run from the kicker motor uh, to the front of the boat. Um, just make sure that everything connects in, because this is, will be what connects into your servo. So you wanna get your iron heated up, uh, make sure you do have enough wire to do your length and uh, solder your wires in. All right, so don't forget to uh, put your heat shrink on before uh, you start soldering your ends on. Um, also, to speed everything up, too, I pre tinned all the wires. So I've gone through all my uh, wires, stripped them, and then put a little solder on each end just so that it'll uh, go together a lot faster. Um, so just go through, hit all your wires, after you've done all your wires, slide uh, your heat shrink up over, and what I did is I did uh, one little piece for each individual wire, and then I slid a bigger piece of heat shrink further down on all three of the wires to slide up over the top of all three. Now you're going to want to do this to both ends after you have uh, the proper length of line you want, one end for uh, the front of the boat and one end to plug into the servo. So our next step is to make our step down. Since uh, your boat runs on 12 volts and the servo runs on 5 volts, we got to convert the 12 volts down to 5 volts. Um, so what I'm doing right now is just getting all my wires that we're going to need to do this uh, all pre tin so everything will go faster once we're ready to do that. So this next step, uh, we're going to use uh, 50 volt, 10 ferret uh, capacitors here. So this will uh, help uh, power your uh, uh, 7805 uh, regulator. Um, what I'm going to do is actually some of those wires we pre tinned I'm going to solder them onto the ends of these to give me a little bit more flexibility uh, when we go to solder it to the actual regulator. Now keep in mind too, um, on these uh, capacitors there is actually a positive and a negative. Um, they should be labeled on the side. If you get them out of the package, one leg will be longer than the other, but generally on the side of the uh, capacitor itself, it'll actually be marked uh, what side is positive and negative. So the next thing we got to get ready now is going to be our regulator. Um, I'll put up a diagram here in a second and kind of show you uh, the different legs. So there is a uh, input, ground, and output. So you want to uh, take note of what that is. Um, I'll pop that up real quick here. So if you're looking at the top of the regulator where the writing is, um, that's what you're looking at. So if you're looking at the writing, the left side is the input, the middle is ground, and the right side is output. Once you uh, get your uh, regulator pre tinned I like to come through and I'm going to cut my legs down um, just so I have less area and when we're all done you'll have a smaller package. Um, so I'll trim those back and uh, after we get those trimmed back this is where we're going to then solder in those capacitors that we got ready. So this is where you want to take note what side's negative. As you can see that white strip on there was negative and I put a black wire on it. So we're going to go through and 
you're going to want to uh, solder both ends of your negative uh, together and then I solder those to the middle post. So this next part you'll probably want to pause and take a look, but all the pre-soldered wires that I did, uh, I already soldered them up so that it'll be nice and easy to uh, solder to our uh, regulator. Um, so regulator's ready. I'm going to come in now and uh, solder those wires to it. Uh, once again, you want to keep note that uh, your black wires are going to go to the middle for uh, your ground and then uh, you have your input side and your output side. So the input side is going to be where the 12 volts is coming in and your output side is going to be where your 5 volts come out. All right, so now that we got everything soldered up, um, we got to put some heat shrink on it so it's protected and doesn't short out uh, when it's hooked up. So um, make sure you got a good assortment of heat shrink. Um, but uh, you can kind of see how I put it on. So first I'm covering the regulator and also at the same time keeping note at what is my input and output. Um, you don't want to lose track of those because once you cover everything up, you'll have no indication. So at this point, too, you, you could even throw maybe a piece of electrical tape on maybe your input or your output side and uh, keep note of that. So after I've covered the regulator, I'm going to put a heat shrink on each one of the capacitors uh, to protect those so there's no um, exposed parts. And after I do each one of the regu or, uh, capacitors, I'll do the whole uh, part as, as one. So the next part we're going to work on is making a bracket. Um, as you can see, this bracket in this picture was on my motor, which is an older, like, 84 Nissan 5 horsepower. Um, and then, actually, Buddy's motor I'm working on right now is a, I believe, early 2000s uh, Yamaha. Um, so this is the bracket that I'm making for his. This is kind of where you'll have to get creative, grinder, handsaw, um, and figure a good placement to build a bracket that's going to hold your servo and be in line um, to be able to pull the throttle. As you can see here, we got our, uh, our bar notched out to fit our servo and be able to actually screw it and mount it to the bar. What ended up working for us is uh, the actual screw that holds the throttle cable uh, ended up being a good mounting spot to be able to put this bracket for the servo. So we're going to pull the, the bolt out and then mount the bracket with the servo on it right uh, in that place right there. All right, so after you get your servo installed, um, you're going to want to pull all your wire through and start running it from the front of the motor, or I mean from the, the motor all the way up to your helm. Um, we've gone ahead and already zip tied it and secured it where we want to run it. Um, but you want to pull pretty much the bulk of your wire all the way up to the helm. All right, so now you want to hook up your power. Um, this is where you're going to put your... Uh, regulator in so 
Uh, once you've identified your input and output, wire your input uh, to your 12 volt and then your uh, output will go with the ground wire to um, your servo tester and that goes into the top spot and then the actual wire that comes from the servo will then plug right into uh, your servo tester as well. Once you get those both plugged in you'll be able to turn your unit on and uh, test your servo and center it up. Um, the importance of this is when you ser uh, center your servo you're going to be able to see um, how tight you need to have your cable. Uh, as you can see here we've uh, now installed our cable. We just use a bike cable here to crimp and throw it in place of where the bar is. So um, at this point uh, it's about ready for testing and cleanup and it's all done.